So right now, um, we are getting a satellite view based on New Orleans, which are the latitude and longitude values that I've given, and also based on the zoom amount. Now, I like the hybrid view personally. Whenever I use Google Maps, I like to live in a hybrid view. I like to get that cross section of real life gritty feel combined with the well, the nice little vector images of streets and the, the city name and all that nice stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run this and what we're going to see here is that now we see the city of New Orleans and we also see the hybrid view so we get the vector assets that are layered up on top of it. Now the thing is if you've worked with maps at Google before we're not actually seeing any markers or any representation, any overlays to show us where we actually are or what position that we want to stick at. I want something to tell me we are in New Orleans. I want a marker, a balloon that tells me that that is the location that we are actually living at right now at this point in time, at this second in the day. Um, so the Google SDK, the Google Maps SDK, gives us the ability to create markers. Markers are nothing more than overlays, and these are the overlays that you've seen a million times at this point. Every time you put an address at Maps at Google, you get one or more little balloons that pop up, those little red um, sticking points that show you the locations that you potentially are looking for. I want to go ahead and add one of those using the API that we have here. So to do that, we need to start off by creating a marker instance. So we're going to create an instance of type marker. And you see, once again, the code hinting shows it. I'm going to select it, which has the import statement above. So I'm going to create a new marker. Now the first argument of our marker instance is the latitude and longitude. The latitude and longitude here allow me to specify the location that I want this marker to actually sit at. This can be any x and y coordinate that we want to specify that a marker should live at. It's completely, absolutely, positively up to you. Now I want it to sit at the location that is New Orleans, wherever that New Orleans marker is. It just so happens that that happens to be the center of my map because I use the set center method to go ahead and apply this. So I'm going to tell my Google Map instance that I want to get the center, and that's going to return back to me the latitude and longitude. Spicy. Now once we do that, we've created a marker, but just like when we added our child to the stage, the marker will not sit visually onto the stage until you explicitly tell it to. Now, we will not use an add child because we're not adding it to the stage. We actually want to add our marker to the map. So I'm going to tell my Google Map instance that I want to add an overlay instance, and I want to add the overlay instance marker. So if we go ahead and run this, and we give it a second to connect, you see that now we get a little marker here that pops up to show us this particular location. Now that's a generic, traditional balloon that you guys are most likely used to seeing. We can customize that however we want um, using the marker options. Um, if we go back to our marker instance here, you see that in addition to asking for the latitude and longitude, we get this second argument, which are marker options. You'll have to go to the Google um, API documentation and reference to see the full listing of options that are available, but there are a ton. We can tell to do all types of crazy, crazy, crazy things. Um, for the sake of example, and I'm not going to actually add my own icon here, I could say variable mo, and I could go ahead and create a marker options instance. If I do this, I could say, for example, that my marker option should use a custom icon. And you guys may have noticed in the code hinting list here that an icon is nothing more than a display object. A movie clip is a display object. We could go ahead and specify an instance of a display object that, I don't know, shows nice little bacon strips. And we can use bacon strips as our markers. Hmm, that would be awesome. All right? So if I did that and I said equals wherever my movie clip is, I'd simply pass that marker option here. The marker option will also allow you to specify the two tip that you want to use. So just like I set the icon, I can say that the two tip should say New Orleans. All right? And I'm going to go ahead and pass MO to my marker. Oops, let's not worry about saving it for now. I think I added a little bit of an extra character there. There we go. So now when I run it, when I roll over this item, what I should see is the two tip New Orleans have associated with it. Now again, there are tons and tons of different marker options. We can specify how we want our two tips aligned, how we want our icons aligned. You know, we even have different types of markers with you know alphabets and you know all types of different balloon markers. We can get into a lot more complicated overlays. Besides that, we have a whole nother set of overlays that I'm not even talking about yet. Um, you can set your overlays to be draggable. We can use polygon overlays that allow you to draw polygons that represent a specific area or environment. You can draw different shapes and, and all kinds of things, and you can take all those things to overlay a map. 
right? So we could use this to draw ovals to show uh, um, the area where crime is being centralized. We could use this to go ahead and, and show the, the radius of uh, people who are being affected or, or go to a specific school or university. All types of different things. It just really depends on your imagination and what you want to do. Cool beans.